let me show you something very mysterious indeed. This comes from Glen Haven, a Victorian mansion that was burnt out in a fire years ago and has been recently refurbished. And during the refurbishment, a concealed room was found, untouched by the fire and the decades, and turned out to be a collection of the most sort of arcane and occult artefacts collected by the previous owner of the mansion, we assume, uh, Mr. Furless, who worked for or put together a sort of secret society he referred to as the 54 to collect these mysterious items and to sort of investigate the influence that they can have over us. Uh, so let me test that now with some bits I have here. One of the items, one of the many items found, was a unsigned painting of two birds of paradise, which um, I have a reproduction of here in a jungle scene. Um, we're going to just slide that off to one side. Um, and tied to it was this poem, which I will also leave here um, for you to check out, but I will read it out to you just in case you can't see it there. It's called The Painting. And it reads, Hugh's dance, a vibrant canvas unfurls, underneath lies a secret, a tale that swirls. Mysteries concealed in feathers and beaks, a clandestine message, the artist speaks. Nestled amidst where colours collide, silent whispers in strokes do hide. Keen eyes may glimpse a hidden theme, unveiling mortality within a dream. Lured by the paradise, a world so bright, lingers a reminder of mortality's plight. Now, art and literature can have a profound and um, spooky sort of influence over our actions. And that's what I want to try and demonstrate for you now. Um, so here I've got a little collection of cards with different items um, pictured. There's a whole bunch of these. Um, and they're totally random. Um, we've got a bit of everything. There is a clock, uh, like an old-fashioned pocket watch there. There's a tree. There's a ghost. We've got a swan. There's a girl holding a bear. There's an elephant. There's oranges. An angel or fairy, perhaps. Uh, I don't even know what that one is. Um, <laughs> there's a fox. There's a throne. There's fruit. You get the idea. There's a whole sea of these cards. Now... What we're going to do, before we do anything, of course, is give them a quick mix-up. And then we're going to test uh, the sort of influence that these items may have over a series of choices. So I'm going to start off by cutting the pack into two. I want you to make a quick decision. Point to any one of the packets now. Do it. Let's say they point here. So then we'll bin the rest. We'll do the same again. Point to either of the packets. Let's say they point to this one. We bin the rest. I cut them again, point to either of the packets. They go this one this time. We bin the rest. Uh, we're down to just four cards. I'm going to click my fingers, point to one, and we'll bin the rest. Go. They point here, for example. We scoop up all of the other cards. Isolate your one, and again, remind you, you could have chosen absolutely any of these, but you were led. To this one card in particular and this is what we want to try out um, you might have been influenced either consciously or subconsciously firstly by the painting the unsigned painting from Glenhaven which depicts two birds of paradise but if you look a little bit closer people sometimes see the shape of a skull the head there the eyes there the mouth there in fact you might have even noticed it before we started and if not, you could have been influenced by the literature as well, because if we cover over the poem, you'll see that the first letters of each line spell out the word human skull. And with that all in mind, let's see where all your decisions led you. They led you impossibly, of course, to the human skull. 